Hello my SOC universe and welcome to the review of what happened in the two Bundesligas and yes I finally can wear a Lusk shirt again, they, another win and this time against a local rival against Reed and still I am not happy but I said okay I always say when the winner will wear Lusk so let's pull out the new Lusk jersey which was the home jersey from last season I think it, it's decent enough, I actually really liked it but yeah, uh, that was for me the big story in Austria. Uh, of course, there was another derby in, in there and that last gave game that they a small shot of making it to the championship round, which I think they will not make because it's just too much of an uphill climb. Also Salzburg showing weaknesses. I mean, all the teams that I now own jerseys of, <laughs> all not that. Uh, great and we had already winter is coming in Austria so that will also pay, uh, play a little bit of a role. However, we will spend most, most of the time talking about an amazing top game in Germany. Amazing! And still everything we're talking about is the referee which is so... Uh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get it's a little bit deflating because if you've never seen a game in Germany those first 60 minutes, it doesn't get better than that. Intensity, up, down, fun, 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 and the referees, the referees, <laughs> well, the ref yeah, the referees, the on the field and then uh, in the booth upstairs. So that will be definitely a talk talking point. We have also a new coach, in, uh, a, a coach fired. There's no new coach yet, and there were a couple of lopsided results. One of which just beggars belief in any way. I would say we'll start in Austria where I said Salzburg really really having a hard time and winning by the skin of their teeth in a way. Uh, they find themselves down to Hartberg who had just beaten Lusk uh, um, on the week last weekend in the 10th minute. It's then an onslaught of Salzburg but not very convincing, very very slow and it takes a while. I mean Christensen thunders it in and the Anguene uh, goal was kind of a little bit stumbled over the line. So Salzburg definitely, I actually am of the opinion at the moment that also Salzburg is very likely not gonna advance in the Champions League and I think it's not even inconceivable that they finish last in the group. Uh, they are not in great form anymore. Uh, unfortunately Lask is not gonna play them until next season. So, uh, we also had Sturm Graz, uh, only one one against Admira Wacker. that's not a good good result. Um, Klagenfurt, <laughs> the slapstick goal against Tirol, uh, if you have any chance to watch the highlights, I think that goal is worth it. Uh, and what is Qualbach has ever last against Reed, the Upper Austrian Derby, I don't consider this a huge ri ri rivalry because Reed is a really small town, far out there. Uh, but yeah, they are the, uh, the other upper Austrian team that is rather successful. And I, I gotta say, for most of the time, I mean, yes, it's annoying if you have this little pesky uh, team doing better than you did, although you're the big team here in the state. But I actually have a lot of respect what they have been doing and can do. And I think it uh, shows that with good work, you can achieve quite, quite a lot. Back to the game. Uh, Lask started out quite well. Um, I think already it was the second minute. Uh, a a, a horrible, horrible back pass by Jovicic of Reed is intercepted by Balic, who had just come on because he actually was not the man meant to start, but the, uh, the striker who was supposed to start got injured, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and he decides to not take it himself. Uh, he runs on, on goal but passes it over to Horvath. Who probably could have one time that he made it one nil, but he also he tries to stop uh, to stop it and then shoot with uh, with the left and then shoot with the right. Probably his stronger foot. Well, is his stronger foot? Uh, and he hits the arm of Jovicic. Doesn't go in. Penalty. Red card. Third. Third minute. I'm saying best start possible. I mean, if we don't win that game. No other game will will be on. Penalty is duly converted. Not a great penalty. But it was hit hard enough to make it 1-0. Then I have to say for the first half um, they hung in there. Uh, Reed definitely um, had actually a few chances but uh, there was definitely uh, the last was the dominant team in the first half. And with some luck they make a second goal and that settles the game. At halftime I uh, talked to my wife and kind of said yeah Lask is one uh, goal up one uh, and one man up 
I think for once it's looking good. But I know they will find a way to mess it. And then I'm, because uh, it was half half, half time I was upstairs and I'm walking down to the TV to, to watch the second. Uh, second half had just started. And I'm thinking down, if I'm the coach, the one thing that I'm saying to my players, please do not get a red card or even a stupid red card. Because we had quite a few yellows already. Um, and yeah. Literally, I'm sitting down, and Michael, in his own half, in, 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 in the attacking half, such a stupid tackle. I mean, this was maybe 25 minute, meters or 30 meters from the goal line. He's just late, gets the second yellow, and it's sent off. And then I know the game was even, I think, uh, then it was really a, a, a level game, and you could see that Reed is at the moment a really uh, decent team. They had some dangerous situation, but it was usually very good, well cleared by Lusk, um, except for the penalty that they had to give, 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 give up, which at first I was really praying that, yeah, Wiesinger, please, have pl you played the ball. Yeah, he played the ball, but he also played the anke. So uh, it was a penalty. And at that point, um, all my women came on the couch and I, I cursed the ball. Uh, put a bad spell on there, um, and uh, everybody, yeah, da, 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 and then he sh Nutz, shoots, Nutz, who was really good at this game, puts it over the bar, and uh, yay! So there was a lot of goodwill <laughs> for last there. They stumble over the line. I really think they, with a little bit more concentration, you make a second goal and you're not shivering. Okay. It was the only early game because the other early, early game had to be postponed to the late slot because of snow in Wolfsburg. The game, despite having a uh, heating under the um, pitch, it was too much snow. They had to twice clear the entire pitch, but it turned out. I mean, it was a little bit, the feel a little, a little bit muddy, and in the end, Wolfsburg gets a fully deserved 3 0 win, which means that Wolfsburg actually is now the second best team in Austria. That's Pretty right. They have been up there for quite a while. That last season was kind of the so and so. Um, so yeah, they are uh, right up there. Amanda, Robin, Dutt, uh, also really nice. And then the derby in Vienna, um, very early on, first minute. It was only the second time that the Vienna derby had a goal score in the second minute. Braunöder, uh, also one of the other goals where uh, it is more of a defensive error. They're not the, the, the repeat uh, the defense is not clear who should uh, pick up home and shall we uh, get the ball? Shall we go in formation? And Braunöder takes it and it's in the net. Uh, really, really super, super goal. And repeat actually is pressuring. Get a penalty in the 25th minute. Have probably in the first half a little bit more chance. The second half, the derby really, really petered out and in, in the 1 1. The fifth draw in a row. That's not. And Rapid still hasn't won at their new home stadium. Uh, against Austria Vienna. Yes, uh, they have not been playing as usual. They played four times a year, but the last three seasons it was always one was in the um, qualification group and the other one were in the championship playoffs. So uh, there are only two, two hours, so maybe that is also a part, but uh, it's a pretty bad streak for uh, Rapid as well. Moving over to, Ger uh, to Germany, we've only, nah, before we move over to G Germany, we've only won last round and uh, Lask has to play at Austria, uh, Wien. Uh, Admira against Rapid is insofar interesting, and the Herzog is the coach of Admira Wacker, and they, they beat, I think, uh, Ra Ra Rapid there. So yeah, we have also West Starby, and yeah, we'll see. Moving over to Germany, as I said. Um, on Friday evening, Union Berlin fully deservedly beat Leipzig 2-1. And uh, Minzlaff, basically, the, the sporting director said, okay, Jesse Marsh, that's it. It's a little bit tougher because he has been now coaching, th uh, not been on the bench for three games due to Corona isolation, but they saw it coming. I mean, they played great against uh, Brugge, but since then, uh, it, Leipzig never looked right. And it seemed more that the coach never fit uh, the team, a team, uh, although the coach would fit perfectly to any Red Bull team, thanks to Nagelsmann, the Leipzig team has moved away from him, so it was kind of weird in that sense, but yeah, I saw it coming, um, yeah, 
I'm so and so about it. I have uh, neither feelings in any way. Uh, I didn't see much of the Sasa the games Milan were, were playing, but I the Leverkusen first Sasa seven, seven, one is a pretty remarkable result. Bochum hanging on at Augsburg for another win. Uh, Mainz destruction of Wolfsburg also kind of an interesting result, but it was all Dortmund Bayern. And boy was that! I said it before. It was an awesome game. It went up and down. Uh, and it was in the first, I want to say, eight, nine minutes. I, I, it definitely, Dortmund started out better. They had already a good chance. And then from a, uh, a referee drop, the ball comes to Bellingham and the Bayern defense is not very sorted. And uh, Bellingham play, plays to Brandt, who wonderfully con con controls it. Take, take, takes it around to the uh, Upe Meccano, I think it was, and puts it in the net. Wonderful first goal. And the place, although only 15,000 there, goes nuts. Deservedly so. And Dortmund keep up the pressure. Definitely. However, Mats Hummers uh, proves that he's everything but a world-class defender. Uh, he plays, he has the ball and he wants to play it forward and Thomas Müller blocks him. And I know Thomas Müller wanted, wanted to make absolutely sure in the interview after that. For once I do it and for once I get this block. But yeah, it's exactly against Hummel that you get this. Almost against you, you get this block. Uh, he runs down. It is very poorly defended then for Hummels even. Uh, that sees Lewandowski uh, Lever Lever on the side. And he just puts it in the internet. Maybe the goalie could have come out as well. Although uh, everyone absolved him a little bit from that. Because he never... I mean, Müller said, well, if he saw me so fast running down... Honestly, if you have any chance to watch Thomas Müller in, 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 in it, was, I've rarely seen such honesty in a modern player. He really calls the shots as they are, whether it's for him or not, uh, or against him. And that I have to give him great credit great, great for. With that goal, Bayern then was largely the better team. Again, one chance that Hummers put into the path of Coma. I think it, I, I, I think it was. And uh, Bayern definitely had more chance, chance in the first first half. However, there was one where like a Buffalo um, Holland comes down and misses by that much. And in the end, it's again a slapstick defender. Uh, go. Guerrero wants to clear it. Hit. Who else? Hummers, ball falls to Coma. And then it gets deflected over Guerrero in, in, in the internet. It was a little bit uh, lucky, but I think overall the lead at halftime for Bayern was probably deserved. However, Dortmund come right back. First 15 minutes of the second half. Again, they start well and get an equalizer through Holland, pushing forward. And then there's one of the most contentious scenes there. A uh, few, few minutes after when Reus runs into the box and uh, Lucas Hernandez shoves him and he is pushed down. And uh, it's a clear penalty. Now, uh, the referee didn't look, look at it. I, 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 and there was no even no contact there. And this is what's upset Dortmund so much, especially what was ha ha happening later. If you watch the replay, Holland is most likely offside in the build-up there. However, at least have the let it check and then decide an offside. Not say play on, play on. Because the foul itself, that was a... I know it's a challenge, I know it's a judgment call, but when you see it, this was a very, very clear foul. And I know why this is hard to get into VAR because of the judgment call thing, but it's very clear. It was to me a penalty. I mean, it would not, not have been game because Hall, Hall was offside. And the German FA took a long time to confirm, yeah, he was offside. This was the next day that they came out, which I think is rather ridiculous. And then uh, the scene that probably broke the. Uh, the rhythm of the game when Julian Brandt and I think it was Upe Meccano clashed in into each other. You see how Brandt is falling. He's completely not with himself and slams into the ground. Has, has a go. Brandt, who was uh, probably Dortmund's player, best player on the day. And from that moment on, you could see a break in the game. And then is the scene that uh, caused all the mayhem. When a corner kick comes in and Hummel wants to defend it. Hummels obviously Homer, yeah, great supplier, wants to defend it, um, is kind of between Bellingham and Müller and falls forward, wants to take it with his uh, uh, head and takes the arm. It is a penalty. I have to say as much. Uh, in Germany they say, do you have to give the penalty, blah, blah, blah. Is it really a must? I have to say, yeah, if you look at it, it's a penalty. Did not, uh, every, everyone afterwards said, um, you know, uh, the referee Felix Zweier let the game run 
as much as possible. So uh, being then called by the uh, by the video assistant uh, to look at this seemed a little bit nitpicky. On the other side, yeah, it was a clear obvious error. And I, I, as much as I've thought, yeah, he played it with the, with, with the head. When you see it, him coming out like this, and yes, he is stumbling around and blah, blah, blah. It's clumsy, it's homers. Lewandowski almost saved. But it's 3-2. But I think if it would have been said, it would have been really taken as goalkeeper was clearly off his line. Uh, he makes a clear step forwards, but Le Le Lewandowski scored it. Then Dortmund had try everything. There was a 10-minute stoppage time and cannot find an equalizer. And Bayern with a huge win. If you look at expect also probably even deserve a win. But all the discussion... There's no discussion about what a wonderful, great game this was, for, especially for 60 minutes. No, it all focuses on the two penalty decisions. And as I said, now having seen it a few times, Dortmund doesn't have really much to, to, to complain. But I think the referee also mishandled it. This was kind of lack of leadership, they said, from, on side of the, from the referees. Because you could have handled the situation uh, much, much better. Now that then Bellingham came, 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 came out and said Zweier, who was implicated in a match-fixing scandal year, years ago, said, well, if you put that match fix in charge, what do you expect? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It tells you, I think Dortmund Dort, Dort were really aggrieved by the penalty decision, especially, I think, more that the Reus one was not given. However, if you take a step back and you see everything, it, everything went right and you have to be mad at yourself and especially Mats Hummels, who, he's not a non-defender. And I have to say, the Bayern defending was not stellar in this game either. And that's made for this great game. So, yeah. I want to round it out with the WTF result of the round. Mönchengladbach 0, Freiburg 6. This is a Mönchengladbach team that in German Cup just a month ago beat Bayern Munich 5-0. It took 5 minutes for Freiburg to be up by 2. 12 to be up by 3. 19 by 4. By the 25th it was 5-0. By the 37th it was 6-0. And the first two goals were a little bit slapstick defending, but then all, the rest were all dead ball situations. And you thought there is no one there. It was apathy to the highest degree. And if you watch the interviews afterwards of Klappach, no one could, could believe it. And even Streich, the Freiburg coach, he looked like he had just lost 6 6 He said, I, I cannot be happy about this. I mean, I'm glad for the three points, but it was... <laughs> I feel with that. I mean, he even went at halftime and took some of the Gladbach players. I mean, Streich is a great, great, great coach. So, yeah, uh, another lopsize, as I said, win, uh, another Freiburg. And I think whenever I'm wearing Lask in these Bundesliga review videos, Freiburg did a big win. So, sorry, Freiburg, I have to go with my team uh, for this one. Although Freiburg was really, really the one that I probably should have worn there. So, yeah, uh, all that means is that Bayern are now the clear favorites to win it all. I mean, uh, that is not 97% Dortmund. It will be hard to make up those four points. And they need to now calm themselves in many, many ways. Anyways, I would like to hear your opinion. Please drop a line below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!